join me. Uh, I'm going to show you another six wonderful patterns and the techniques uh, that go along with it. So enjoy this for the next hour or so and let's tie some bugs. The next fly that we're going to tie is a pattern called a robber fly. This represents a real terrestrial fly. We've all seen them. Uh, if you looked in a Peterson Field Guide series on the robber fly, you'd see a picture of a fly with a long extended ab abdomen and a fairly robust round thorax. Um, and then you would obviously recognize that you've seen this fly before. And if you decide to handle them in the process of photographing or whatever, understand that the warning that they give you in the book that says larger specimens can inflict a painful bite. From personal experience, uh, they can, so be careful. We're going to tie this fly in a size 12 or 14. This is a size 12 standard dry fly hook. We're going to use regular 8 aught fly tying thread in black. So let's get this started here, just like we would normally do. Let's start it right back by the behind the eye of the hook. But here, instead of taking our thread all the way back over the barb like we normally would, we're going to stop just short of the hook point where that thread is hanging right there to make this extended body. This fly was first shown to me by Chauncey Lively, uh, the late Chauncey Lively, great, wonderful gentleman tire who had moved from his beloved waters in Pennsylvania to the north branch of the Osable and showed this pattern to me many, many years ago. Uh, his pattern was tied with a lot of deer hair or elk, deer hair body, abdomen, uh, and hair wings. I'm going to take the synthetic approach again uh, that I like to do. and We're going to make a twisted or braided body, the abdomen. This is a long hank of kind of a dark dun EP fibers. And what I'm going to do is have a couple inches in between thumb and finger on both hands and I'm going to start to twist this. Twist it and grab it, twist it and grab and pull that up real tight and then what we're going to do is take that down to the hook or a bodkin or something. In this case, I have the end of my bobbin cradle here just to get it started so that when I pull it off of there, you can see what happens right away that it twists shut into this waterproof and extremely durable body. So then what we're going to do here is kind of measure it from this tie down spot you want it about regular hook shank length from that point. So we're going to measure it. At that stage, we're just going to let this unravel, trim it so that I have about an eighth of an inch or so to tie in here. Just do a pinch loop, put a few wraps on it and check the length, and that's about right. I'm really going to tie that in here nice and